Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Uh, back to uh, the lathe work here. This is my Micromark 7x14 inch mini lathe. And uh, I had a need to um, bore out the uh, inside of this piece of tubing here a little. And so the, this is the first time I've been forced to figure out how to really work with my uh, boring bar and we're going a little bit backwards here because I want to leave it as is. I've got it set up just right and then I'll take it out and show you some more about the setup but um, I've had the I've tried to do this a few times before and, and frankly just haven't had any luck and I, I knew it had to do with rigidity issues. This is a uh, this boring process the way the tool is loaded up is uh, requires a very rigid setup in your carriage which has a lot of sort of weak points if you will whether it be through the uh, bedways or the gibs on the lower saddle or the compound slide gibs or even in your um, in my case a quick tool quick change tool post or in your tool holder tool holder um, so I finally uh, sort of did some tweaking here and I've got it to where it's working really well and uh, you can see I'm not done but you can see I've, I'm comfortably making uh, cuts as I need to um, so it feels good. Um, this is a piece of I think one and a quarter inch tubing. I've been cutting at about 400 RPM and so I'm just going to go ahead and take a quick video. Alright, I'm going to take the video from this angle which is in the back right corner of the lathe zoomed in. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of a view of what I'm actually doing in the tool. Although I've got the tool chucked up so short in the uh, tool holder here that um, you probably won't be able to see a lot. I'm going to put a little bit of my coolant in. I'm just smoothing out the inside right now, so I'm actually just going to take a towel off. Take another pass. Okay, here are the chips uh, that came off of that, and uh, they're thin because I was only taking about a thou. Uh, pass, but um, before I was taking heavier and it worked. And if you were able to tell from that video, I was um, it was a smooth cutting operation, it wasn't chirping, it sounded right, and most importantly, it felt right. Uh, before, when I had rigidity issues, you could tell that the um, the tool head was, was, was being allowed to move backwards, so it wasn't actually making any bit of a cut, it was really just rubbing and you know, it didn't feel right, didn't sound right, there was no chip. So uh, really happy to, to make progress here. Let me show you a few things that I did uh, to get going. The first is that I used the shortest, um, let's see, actually I bought one of these inexpensive kits from, I think it was from Enco or Little Machine Shop for I think it was 15 or 20 bucks of, of various different boring heads and uh, I used the shortest one in my AZ2 CNC uh, boring head holder and I chucked it all the way up. Um, from what I've read online on the, on the forums, you know, one of the biggest issues is tool flex when you're doing this operation because there's so much lateral side load on the tool. So by shortening that up um, and keeping it nice and tight and closer, most importantly too, closer to the center of I guess not center of gravity, but the area of strength of my carriage, that helps. Um, I also went ahead and tightened up my uh, jibs right before I did this, so they're a little tighter than I would probably normally run them, but I think that's okay for now. I've also resigned to the fate that if I wear them out, you know, in a few years instead of many years, I'm fine replacing them. Um, I'd rather have good work and, and deal with that. Um, then the last thing, which is the most uh, extensive thing, which I've done, 
um, which you can see here. If I zoom in, um, and this I covered in another one of my videos. All right, this is a shot of my this is my carriage wheel zoomed in. This is the saddle gibs down here, or excuse me, jibs, and I have shimmed those, um, and I've spent some time shimming them. It's not hard. It's not intimidating. I encourage everyone just to try it and do it. Um, I'm using um, one thou and half thou brass shim stock, and I cut out these little pieces just with a pair of uh, scissors or pliers, um, and was sliding them in there and getting a good feel for how tight I needed it to be. And now that I've got that shimmed properly, um, there is really no movement or slop in my uh, in my whole my whole uh, carriage. And I can tell it's you know you can't wiggle here because the handle won't give you a good feel, but if you grab it right here and you try to move it, there's just no room whatsoever lifting it up and down or twisting it or wiggling it. Yet at the same time, I can, you know, move it freely along. And that, I think, was really the ultimate key to getting this uh, boring operation to work because before I had a little bit of slay, play here um, and it was lifting up. And I'm guessing that when it lifted up, it was changing the position of the, the tool head and it wasn't on the correct angle um, and, you know, just just not good. The other thing you have to play with, and I may not have this perfect, but it seems to be working, is the angle of the uh, actual tip as it cuts as it touches the inside. You need it to be on center line. I've heard some people say you want it to be angled a little bit up to deal with a rake. Um, I'm not an expert on this. I've got some learning to do, but uh, by simply trial and error, I've got it to a point where I'm happy with how it's cutting. That's all, folks. Thanks.